Today with Joseph Prince. It's one thing to be alive because you are in your 20s, you are uh, 10 years old, you are 30 years old, but it's another thing to remain alive. That speaks of power. The only commandment that's brought back in the New Testament because of the promise, not for you to, to uh, do it legalistically. Amen. God wants to do it with love. But the promise there is that honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. Of all the Ten Commandments, this has a promise. It's the first one with a promise. That it may be well with you first. How many want things to go well? And that you may live long, not in heaven, on the earth. All my sins are remitted from the eyes of a holy God. God doesn't deal, God doesn't see sin on me. God doesn't deal with me based on sin anymore. Does that mean I'm perfect in my behavior? I'm sinless? No. But God doesn't see it. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. So partake of the Lord's Supper, knowing this. If many can sleep before their time, if you partake correctly, worthily, the Bible says, many will be strong, many will be healthy, and many will live long. Be righteousness conscious. When you're sin conscious, you are negating what Jesus did. Okay? Understand? You're negating what Jesus did. Which means, uh, whenever, you see, as sure as God made Jesus who knew no sin to be your sin at the cross, just as sure you are the righteousness of God in Christ, in God's eyes. Okay? So for you to feel sinful, to feel ashamed and all that, is to say, Jesus didn't do a good job. You're dishonouring the work of Christ. Do you know that in the presence of Jesus, no one dies? Go to the Gospels. Nobody ever died in His presence. In fact, when He attends a funeral, He always fouls up the whole show. It's no more a funeral, it's a celebration. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. To have Jesus, to see Jesus is life! Those who were bitten by the snake, when they saw Jesus, they, they live. So our endeavor is to see more and more of Jesus. And I pray today you will see Jesus. Jesus taught us to seek first and foremost God's righteousness, which is a gift. And when you seek God's righteousness, everything that you desire in life will be added to you. Receive your copy of Grace Is Not Fair CD DVD album as a thank you for your gift of any amount to the ministry today. Discover how God is unfairly gracious to you and unlock His abundant grace in every area of your life, even when you don't feel like you deserve it. And for a gift of $85 or more to the ministry, you will also receive Win the Fight, How to Overcome the Enemy's Tactics Against You for DVD album. Growing up, they say you're you are useless. You're always this, always that. Shake it off you in Jesus' name. And say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. And start to prosper because the thief will have to stop stealing, killing, and destroy as far as you are concerned because you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. Don't miss today's uplifting offer. Get your copy now at josephprince.org or call us toll free at 1-877-769-5433. The Word of God says in Hebrews chapter 2, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shed in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Jesus through death, that God never designed for man to suffer under. God never meant for man to die. The Bible calls death an enemy to God. But Jesus through death destroyed him, the devil, who had the power of death that is the devil, and release those, that's you and I, release those, not just the Jews, but release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So the Bible tells us that uh, the reason why man is, has a propensity to be subject to the bondage of fear, the bondage of sickness, the bondage of depression, the bondage of, of addiction, the, whatever bondage it is, it's all the, it all comes from the fear of death. Amen. Now, in the context, what do you think he's talking about? Release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So, the main reason Christ came is to die for our sins. Amen. So that the sin barrier between man and God is removed. So that God can be righteous on a righteous foundation to receive sinful man into His presence. Inasmuch as Christ's death and His blood has removed all our sins from the sight of a holy God. So today, let me say this, today in God's sight, there is no sin on you. God sees no sin on you. Now, is there sin in us? Yes, there's sin in us. But as far as God 
And when God looks at us, there's no sin on us when He looks on us. Do you understand? The blood of Christ has removed all sins judicially. There's nothing in us that He can punish. Amen. Anyway, come back to this again. Release those who through fear of death will all their lifetime subject to bondage. So one of the reasons why Jesus came, right, besides uh, removing our sins, is also to destroy death. God hates death. Unless you, 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 you understand, unless you accept the fact that God hates death. It was never God's plan for man to die. The Bible calls death an enemy. And that's why the last enemy to be put under Jesus' feet is death. And the body of Christ, the last enemy, let me show you this verse, 1 Corinthians 15, for Jesus must reign. How many say He's reigning? He's been reigning, come on. He's been reigning. He must reign till He has put all His enemies under His feet. Now where is He today? In heaven, seated at the Father's right hand. And the Bible says, He must reign till all His enemies be put under His feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Therefore, God calls it an enemy. God hates death. I, did you hear what I said? I said God hates death. And the last enemy, but Pastor Jesus conquered death. He did. But this is talking about putting the enemy under His feet, the body of Christ. The Father is waiting until death itself is put under the feet of the body of Christ. Amen. And we're coming towards that. So ever since Jesus died and rose again 2,000 years ago, He is reigning in heaven and He's reigning till one after another of the enemies is put under His feet. Amen? Guess what? It must be that as more and more enemies are put under Jesus' feet, you'll see the church getting more and more victorious until the last enemy is death, which I believe the fullness of it will happen at the rapture. So I believe there's going to be a revelation about how not to die before your time. If Jesus should tarry, how to live long. Amen. The rapture, 1 Thessalonians 5 says, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. Today it's very popular to say the rapture was a figment of someone's imagination from the 1800s. Uh, 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 rapture is man concocted uh, ideas and all that. But the Bible says it is the word of the Lord. Let me say this by the word of the Lord. That we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. So look at this. I was fascinated by this word, that we who are alive and remain. Actually, when it says we who are alive until the coming, it should, be, it should suffice. <clears throat> but it doesn't say that. It says we who are alive and remain. You see, the fact that anytime Jesus comes, there'll be, there'll be people on earth, right? People who are alive, right? Come on. I mean, children especially, they'll be alive, right? But it's one thing to be alive, it's another thing to remain alive. That denotes power. That's power. Power to remain alive. It's one thing to be alive because you are in your 20s, you are uh, 10 years old, you are 30 years old, but it's another thing to remain alive. That speaks of power. So I believe that the rapture generation are people who have learned to remain alive. And if that is not enough, he goes on to say in the next verse, then we who are alive, when the Lord descends, we who are alive and remain, repeated twice, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Are you comforted? Then we have this principle where Pastor Prince, if, you know, everyone has a timing. Time to go, you go. Time to leave, you leave. And God knows when you're supposed to die. God has a timing for everybody. No, you're misquoting Ecclesiastes. Doesn't say that God has a time for you to die. Yeah, in Hebrews, it's appointed unto men to die once. No, it doesn't say that. That God has a time for them, that man to die. It's appointed unto men to die once. Ever since man sinned, he's appointed to death. So there is no such thing as God has the timing for everybody. In fact, the Bible says some things you do can prolong your life. Some things you do can shorten your life. Do you know that dishonoring parents can shorten your life? In fact, uh, uh, the only commandment that's brought back in the New Testament because of the promise, not for you to, to uh, do it legalistically, amen, God wants you to do it with love, but the promise there is that honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise 
of all the Ten Commandments, this has a promise. It's the first one with a promise that you may, that it may be well with you first. How many want things to go well? And that you may live long, not in heaven, on the earth. Amen. Some things you do can, in fact, uh, Proverbs 10 says, the fear of the Lord prolongs days. How many want that to happen? The fear of the Lord prolongs days. And we know the fear of the Lord defined by Jesus is worship of God. That's why, uh, in fact, there's a st statistic study uh, done on, on people who go to church often and worship God. They found out that they live longer than normal, normal, peop normal people. And that is stats in a secular newspaper report. I used to cut it out. I don't know where is it now. They live long. Amen? The Bible says, how do we define long life? What is long for someone is different from another person. Some, some people say, oh, 80, I'm happy already. All right? Someone says, well, uh, if I'm, if I'm uh, 90, I'll be happy. And that's why the Bible says, for the believer, Psalms 91, the very last verse, is your standard. Amen? With long life, God is talking. He says, I will satisfy him. Doesn't say how old. Long life. But the criteria is your satisfaction. You're not satisfied at 80? Tell the Lord, go on. Are there people who pray and ask the Lord they want to go on? Yes. <clears throat> In fact, because of some reason or whatever, God told uh, uh, King Hezekiah he's about to die. And he prayed. He told God, you know, he doesn't want to leave just yet. You know, he told the Lord to remember him. And, and the same prophet Isaiah, God turned him around, made him about face turn. He went back to the king and says, God says you'll add 15 years to your life. You can ask God, and nothing is predestined in that way when it comes to this kind of thing. He asked God for life and God gave 15 more years to him. Amen. All right, so criteria is with long life, I will satisfy him. Then there was a time that men used in the book of Genesis, men used to live like hundreds of years, 600 over years, 800 over years. Even uh, uh, um, Adam lived to 900 over years. Of course, the longest living man at that time was Methuselah. So Methuselah means when he dies, he's going to come. What's going to come? Judgment. So God says, well, you know, man has sinned. His heart is evil continually. And he's doing violence to one another, destroying. And they're living hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years where they have time to impact the next and next and next, the next generation and, and influence them for evil. That's how evil was propagated. Man was still around. So God says, I'm going to cut man's life short. And this is what God said. In Genesis, the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for his indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. So now there's a blessing in Hebrew where the Jewish people today uh, wish one another, may you live to be 120. It's taken from this part here, but let me tell you this from Moses', Moses uh, life. But actually, 120 here is actually God speaking this in judgment. God saying, my spirit will not always strive with man. His days will be 120 years. But it's good enough we reach that, right? But it's a statement in judgment. God wanted man to live longer than that. In fact, in Psalms 90, we have the story of, uh, by the way, Psalms 90 is a psalm of Moses. Moses wrote this, not David. And Psalms 90 is about the children of Israel in the wilderness when they were under God's judgment and because of their sin of Kadesh Barnea, they didn't believe God and they wandered for 40 years in the wilderness. And this is what they said, the days of our lives are sent. Oh, it sounds like a, a soap opera. The days of our lives. The days of our lives are 70 years. And if by reason of strength, they are 80 years. And somehow I hear Christians saying, you know what God gives us, right? Our lifespan is 70 to 80 years. I, I hear preachers saying that. I hear people teaching that. No, it's not. Look at the context. And by the way, whatever I teach, make sure it's in context. It's telling you that, that these are people under judgment. And yet their days are 70 to 80 years. If they are strong, go for 80 years. Amen. But there are people under judgment. Let me prove that to you. Everything must be in context. The verse before this says, uh, after this says, the days of our, no, the, show them the days, uh, yeah, before that. All our days have passed in your wrath. For the Americans, your wrath. Your wrath. God was angry with them. Do you know, child of God, God will never be angry with you. He's not talking about you, child of God. He's talking about the children of Israel in, un, under God's wrath. Their days even then were 70 to 80 years. Moses lived to 120. Joshua lived to 110. The rest is considered judgment to live 70 to 80. Under judgment. 
I want to show you all this because I want to create your expectancy because everything works by faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Okay, let's, let's uh, bring this to a close. Um, what do I do, Pastor? What do I need to do, Pastor Prince? Wherein lies the hope? Let me just tell you this. Number one, it's important that you understand the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18. And those who love it will eat its fruit. The thing is this. The Bible itself says death and life are in the power of the tongue. We are not creators. Amen. But we are seated with Christ on His throne. And there's a spiritual authority that will not be released until we speak. Today, Jesus is in heaven. And if the demon-possessed person in front of you, you don't pray, Jesus, cast it out, cast it out. He will say, lift up your rod, lift up your, His name, speak in His name, and the demons will go. We are the, we, we've been given the power of attorney. We must exercise spiritual authority. If a, if a, if a, if a uh, traffic police at the junction try to stop the car and all that, and one car just passed by him, another car passed by him, he don't call HQ and say, uh, they are passing by me, you know. Amen. Use your authority. Amen. So that's likewise, we are not creators. Only God is the creator. But we are seated with Christ and we enforce with our tongue. Have you noticed that how the devil cut short people's lives? And for some reason, it's fascinating. All right, I'm just saying this because it's very fascinating. But ask yourself why. The devil has programmed into the human language death more readily than life. What do you say in Chinese when things are difficult? Some bad thing happened. You say what? See ya, see ya. No one say, oh, life, life, life. Right? I'm dying for the piece of cake. If you're dying for the piece of cake, you won't be eating it long. <laughs> I know the expression, but why, why not say, I'm living for the piece of cake? It's programmed. But Pastor Prince, you're splitting hairs over words. But I think the devil wants us to think it's a light thing. But we know the Bible. We know the Word of God. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. All right? Another one I want to give you real quick is this. Um... Communion. The Bible says the only reason in the church, in the church, people in the world dying before their time and all that is almost like understandable. People in the, in the world becoming sick and all that is understandable. But in the church, it should not be so, right? And yet the Bible says that for this reason, many are weak, many sick, many sleep or die prematurely. Obviously, it's not the best or else he, he wouldn't be writing these words. And there's only one reason that happens. Singular reason. The word reason there in the Greek is singular. For this reason. And the reason is that they do not know how to partake of the Lord's Supper. Amen. They take the bread and say, just a piece of bread, just to remember Jesus. Cup, just drink it. But those who know how to partake, they take the bread and say, why is it separated from the blood? Because there's a purpose for the bread. His, his back was striped. He was scourged. Why? Could have just, just gone straight to the cross. Because by his stripe, as sure as the stripe fell on Jesus' back, just as sure, I am healed. His blood was shed. All my sins are remitted from the eyes of a holy God. God doesn't deal, God doesn't see sin on me. God doesn't deal with me based on sin anymore. Does that mean I'm perfect in my behavior? I'm sinless? No. But God doesn't see it. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. So partake of the Lord's Supper, knowing this. If many can sleep before their time, if you partake correctly, worthily, the Bible says, Many will be strong, many will be healthy, and many will live long. Amen? You don't hear many places that have it every week. We are radical. Early church, even more radical. They go from house to house. Every, daily, the Bible says. Last two verse. Moses, he died. 120 years old, when he died, his eyes was not dim, nor his natural vigor diminished. And the Bible says that... Uh, Oh, I, I, I need to tell you this real quick. Uh, also be righteousness conscious. When you're sin conscious, you are negating what Jesus did. Okay? Understand? You are negating what Jesus did. Which means, uh, whenever, you see, as sure as God made Jesus who knew no sin to be your sin at the cross, just as sure you are the righteousness of God in Christ, in God's eyes. Okay? So for you to feel sinful, to feel ashamed and all that, is to say, Jesus didn't do a good job. You're dishonoring the work of Christ. 
Something happened to Aaron. Even Aaron was the one who actually, the people persuade him to make a, a golden calf and all that. And he made the golden calf, which is a death penalty actually. He did a lot of things that were wrong, but yet he never died. In fact, he became the first uh, high priest to wear the garments of the high priest, the garments of glory and beauty with the 12 precious stones. Nothing happened to him. Death cannot fasten on him until God said to Moses, bring him up the mountain, Mount Hor. And this happened, the Bible says, uh, strip Aaron of his garments, put them on Eleazar, his son. Aaron will be gathered to his people and die there. So Moses did just as the Lord commanded. He went up to Mount Hor in the start of all congregations. So three of them went up. Moses, his brother Aaron, and Aaron's son Eleazar. They went up the Mount Hor, and I've seen Mount Hor. Those of you who go for the trip uh, to Israel, there's an option, right, to go to Petra, Jordan. And the hotel that you stay in Petra, tell them to point out to you Mount Hor. Because Mount Hor, there's, there's a, like, like a, 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 a mausoleum uh, right on top, a white color building. That is where uh, Aaron was buried on Mount Hor. You know how high is Mount Hor? 6,000 feet from the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea area is near the area of Petra. So you, you find that they went up. This guy is not sick. They climbed 6,000, you know, from, from sea level is uh, 4,000 feet plus, all the way 4,800 4, feet high. I mean, this guy is not sick. All three of them march up to die there. But death cannot come on him until Moses stripped Aaron of his garments and put them on Eleazar, his son, and Aaron died there. The moment he was stripped, don't let the devil strip you of the righteousness consciousness. Amen? Moses died at 120 and his eyes was not dim. His natural force was not abated. And the only reason the Bible tells us that happened in Hebrews 11, the last verse, is by faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king, for Moses endured as seeing him who is invisible. He endured. Moses endured is a word used only one time in the entire New Testament. It's the word karterio, which actually means that Moses remained the same the moment he saw Jesus. His body, everything remained the same. There's something that is amazing. Do you know that in the presence of Jesus, no one dies. Go to the Gospels. Nobody ever died in his presence. In fact, when he attends a funeral, he always fouls up the whole show. It's no more a funeral. It's a celebration. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. To have Jesus, to see Jesus is life. Those who are bitten by the snake, when they saw Jesus, they, they live. So our endeavor is to see more and more of Jesus. And I pray that today, you will see Jesus. In fact, Vine says this like this. Vine says, the word katerio, which is used only one time, has an idea of physical power. Used only one time. Moses remained the same because he kept on seeing him who is invisible. Tell your children, when you go to school, don't just see your teacher. See Jesus with you. Amen? When you feel alone, you're not alone. Who is with you? Jesus is with you. Amen? Tell them to see a young Jesus, you know. It's okay. Tell them to see a young Jesus. Like they are 10 years old, see a 10-year-old Jesus as their friend. They practice His presence. He's going to be the greatest friend they ever had. Amen? When your teacher scolds you, see Jesus in between. <laughs> Amen? Something will happen, you know, and I believe that this is what our, our children are looking for. They're looking for superheroes that are not in existence. There is one that is. His name is Jesus. And I pray that this has blessed you. Jesus taught us to seek first and foremost God's righteousness, which is a gift. And when you seek God's righteousness, everything that you desire in life will be added to you. Receive your copy of Grace Is Not Fair CD DVD album as a thank you for your gift of any amount to the ministry today. Discover how God is unfairly gracious to you and unlock His abundant grace in every area of your life, even when you don't feel like you deserve it. And for a gift of $85 or more to the ministry, you will also receive Win the Fight, How to Overcome the Enemy's Tactics Against You for DVD album. Growing up, they say you're, you're useless. You're always this, always that. Shake it off you in Jesus' name. And say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. And start to prosper because the thief will have to stop stealing, killing, and destroy as far as you are concerned because you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. 
Don't miss today's uplifting offer. Get your copy now at josephprince.org or call us toll free at 1-877-769-5433. wild wild west and I didn't care about God and I wasn't thinking about God and I saw at first I was like who's this man on TV I was like what is he talking about I was trying to kill myself and he was on TV and he was talking about a butterfly that fell in some trash he was like it's it's filling the rubbish but it's still a butterfly it has to get up and fly like I remember that and I was like crying I was like who is this man but After that, like, I found this program again. Like, I just started listening to it. Like, that was all I was listening to. God has done a complete turnaround in my life. Like, I'm really walking in victory now, and I'm so happy about it. Hey, I'm Joseph Prince. I'm so excited to share with you about Decibel. Decibel is the ministry's online channel specially designed for young adults. We have created bite-sized, grace-based content such as videos, articles, and so much more. We started Decibel as I saw our young people growing up in a world where their values, beliefs, and faith are constantly challenged. I personally hope that it will give them biblical and practical handles to help them navigate their world with God's grace and wisdom. I'm sure you agree that this next generation is too important a missions field for us to neglect. They need to hear the gospel of grace. Thank you for sowing the gospel of grace into this next generation. Your support goes a long way and reaches young people in great need of our Lord Jesus. God bless you. week on Joseph Prince. The word righteous or justification in some of your English Bible is the same Greek word, dikaiou or dikaiosis, right? Different branches of the etymology. It means this, God declared you righteous. Okay? It's a beautiful revelation. You know, when you think about it, wow, Jesus would not have been raised if we were not declared righteous. At that point, you receive Christ, you were declared righteous. That's the aorist tense. You understand? That means we are not in a process to become righteous. One of these days, I'll become righteous. No, no, friend. You have been made righteous. You are constantly righteous and freely too at that. By His grace, which is released through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Joseph Prince Ministries is a Section 501c3 nonprofit organization, and your gift is tax deductible for the amount that exceeds any fair market value of the materials you receive from us. 